What's up, fuckers? It's tea time. Hollywood is obsessed with remaking and rebooting movies that have already been made. Once the first remake is released, the gap between any subsequent remakes gets shorter and shorter. A Christmas Carol is the most remade film of all time. Nine versions have been made for the screen since 1935. The 2000s had the most remakes of any decade so far. In 2005, 17% of top grossing films were Hollywood remakes. Hollywood seems to just keep repeating itself. You wanna know what else is just as unoriginal as Hollywood? History in the USA. History is always repeating itself. It's become predictable and boring, but it's also scary enough to make you shit your pants like former president depends. Americans keep having the same conversations, the same debates, and the same debacles over and over and over again. Just like A Christmas Carol, and it's not fucking remakes, white supremacy is the thing we just can't quit. Now it looks like Jim Crow 2.0 is the newest reboot hitting the screen. Liars and cheaters and racists, so mine. It's time to put on your thinking caps. Oh, or your clan hoods. I forget Trump publicans join us for tea from time to time, and I'd be less than hospitable if I didn't make everybody feel included. All right, everybody, let's talk about Georgia Senate Bill SB202. It's a bill that sounds like it's named after a droid from Star Wars. Movies Hollywood has been making since the 70s. Very fitting name, though, since this bill was inspired by Tangerine Palpatine's 2020 landslide election loss. Georgia's SB202 will make elections there less fair, given the GQP a structural advantage among Georgia voters. It's one of the first major voting bills to pass post-2020 election. And guess what? It won't be the last. Georgia Governor Klansman Kemp, <clears throat> Brian Kemp, said this bill makes it easy to vote and hard to cheat, but it's actually quite the opposite. The bill was created to welcome election fraud, not stop it. The GQP legislators gave themselves the right to take over local elections and throw out results they don't like. And since Republicans often lose the popular vote, I have a feeling they aren't going to like a lot of results. This will lead to partisan control of elections and more difficulty for voters trying to cast their ballots by mail. This bill will also lead to longer voting lines and make it a crime for nonpartisan groups to hand out food and water to voters standing in lines. Lines that the GOP intentionally created. Fuck, I had no idea making sure people didn't have drinking water helped ensure safe and fair elections. Flint, Michigan must never have to worry about voter fraud. But this is what voter suppression looks like to regular people. Or, as the Republic clans call it, reform. The desire for those so-called reforms came after President Biden beat former President Diaper Don in the 2020 election. And the state sent two Democrats to the Senate. There has been no evidence of fraud or irregularities in any recent elections. The only thing that changed was how many people voted. The GOP doesn't want you to vote, which should come as no surprise that since 2012, the GOP in Georgia has closed more than 200 polling places. They love long lines even more than people hate waiting in long lines. But the only way that they can stay in power is to lie, cheat, steal, and silence voters, especially black and brown voters. Now, it was very bright in the room where Governor Kemp, and that's KKK EMP was signing the voter suppression bill into reality. And I'm not talking about the lighting. I'm talking about all the white skin. The only brown thing in the room was the damn table they were signing the bill on. There was less diversity in the room than the Golden Globes nominee list this year in Hollywood. Oh, and we can't forget to set the stage for this Jim Crow reboot. The bill was being signed under a beautiful painting of an old Georgia plantation that had once been home to hundreds of slaves. You can now rent the venue for weddings if you find that kind of thing romantic. And if you do, you might be a racist. But as the white men were signing SB202, Georgia State Representative Park Cannon knocked on the governor's door to ask if she could watch the signing of the bill. She, of course, was arrested and hauled off to jail and is now facing two felonies. But Park, girl, you should have known better than to think that you would be invited to the governor's Klan meeting. You're silly. <laughs> we all know there's only room for one person of color at those meetings, and even though she didn't show her face at this one, I know that Candace Owens would have been infuriated had you taken her spot. 
We all know who Candace Owens is, right? The GOP's EBF. That's the emergency black friend. Yeah. Anytime the GOP is accused of racism, Candace Owens just swoops in to tell everybody that racism isn't real. But hey, we all have to make our money somehow. Isn't that right, Candace? Racism is certainly alive and well today. Just like it was back in the 1860s. Jim Crow laws were a collection of state and local statutes that made racial segregation legal. They were named after a black minstrel show character, a white man in blackface named Jim Crow. Hollywood and history, y'all. It's not clear how Jim Crow, the character that popularized blackface in the 19th century, became associated with these laws, but it should tell you everything that you need to know about the intention of these proposals. I'm sure it had something to do with the fact blackface shows soared in popularity after the Civil War. These widespread demeaning portrayals of black people paralleled a period when Southern state legislators were passing black codes to restrict the behavior of former slaves and other African Americans. Black codes were restrictive laws designed to limit the freedom of black people and ensure their availability as a cheap labor force after slavery was abolished. The Jim Crow system was designed to remind everyone that white people were superior to black people in every way. Intelligence, morality, and so-called civilized behavior. The legal system was stacked against black citizens, with former Confederate soldiers working as police and prosecutors, judges and juries, making it difficult for African Americans to win court cases and ensuring they were subject to the cruelty of black codes. Let's talk about black codes. A black man could not shake a man's hand that was white because it implied being socially equal. Black people could not show affection in public. A black man could not offer a white woman a light for her cigarette. If a black person rode in a car that was being driven by a white person, they had to ride in the back seat or the bed of the truck. White people who were driving a vehicle always had the right of way over a black person. Black people could never imply that white people were lying or show superior intelligence over white people. I am tired of living shitty remakes and reboots of horrible history. I'm even tired of a Christmas Carol remakes. I've had enough of the ghosts of our racist past haunting current policies and politics in this country. I wanna live in a world where a black woman can knock on a door and be welcomed inside. And when racism knocks on the door, it gets hauled the fuck off. Stop remaking movies. Stop rebooting racism. Voting is a right. Every American's right. I want everybody to have a great fucking day unless you support voter suppression.